Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are grooming Tiger and he's a four-year-old Maltese and Shih Tzu mix. Or for the Shih Tzu lovers out there, I understand that it is pronounced Shizu, but I like to pronounce it Shih Tzu because a lot of them poop on my table. Okay, let's get started on Tiger because he is a bit of a special case with some special needs. So Tiger has what's called invertible disc disease. I hope that I pronounced that correctly, IVDD. And that basically means that he has an injury to the discs in his spine. He did have surgery to correct it. That is the reason why he is in a belly band and there is a mat below him. I wanna prevent as much slipping as possible because if he slips, he can cause that injury again. Although it's been fixed, it's, it could happen again. So I wanna keep him as safe as possible this is only his second professional groom in his life, so he also might be very stressed about the entire process. And we're about to find out if he lives up to his name. He is matted, unfortunately, so I am going to shave him in a number seven today. He's not matted everywhere, but it's really bad on his legs, specifically his front legs. Good boy. I would love to leave him a little bit longer and fluffier and more adorable, but considering he is matted, the matting in his front legs is not brushable. It is past the point of no return, so it has to be shaved. Unless I want him to look like a lamb, I can't exactly shave his legs and not his body because he would have stick legs and that would be comical. So if the matting is severe in certain areas, I will switch over to a 10. Something I just realized while I'm shaving his legs because I always feel the back legs is to see if he has dew claws. And he does have a dew claw and it's a hanging dew claw. So if I didn't feel for that, it would, could be a very likely possibility that I would shave it off with the seven blade. So it's really important when you are grooming any dog to check to see if they have hanging dew claws. I think that the reason why this dog has only been groomed twice in his life is because the owner was a bit worried about bringing him to a professional groomer because of his medical history. I don't really blame her. It's very nerve wracking when you have a dog that could be easily injured to trust a stranger to work on them and not aggravate the injury. So I get it, she's been doing him herself. And I think it just came to a point where she couldn't do it herself anymore. She was running into some problems. Are you gonna live up to your name? I heard you don't like your paws being touched. Are you gonna get a little feisty with me? I hope not. You get feisty? Don't get feisty with me. All right, I might have to go in with a 10 on those paws because they're a little bit too matted. Let's turn you around and work on the other side and then we'll worry about those paws, okay? When dogs have issues with their spine, you have to be careful the way that you lift their head because obviously it's all connected. Good boy, you're actually so tiny underneath all that hair. You don't even exist. Okay, do you have a hanging dew claw on this paw too? Yes, you do. Good boy. Oh, okay, don't do that. Don't pull on the noose. Don't pull on the noose. Being a good dog, yeah. Let's see your head. Good boy. It's okay. Okay. He has calmed down quite a bit. 
He was moving a lot on the table when he first got here and it just made me uncomfortable, but now he is not doing that. So he's definitely calmed down. I am going to shave underneath his matted areas and sanitary areas with a number 10, and then he's gonna go for a bath. Boy. Let's see. I've been told that he doesn't like his nails, so I'm going to save that till the very end of the groom. You did really good. Now, I do want to show you guys something. Now, the owner told me that he does not like having his front legs touched. Hey, buddy, over here. If you look at those front legs, I think it's pretty obvious why he does not like having them touched. They are pretty wonky. They should be straight, not bend the way that they do. So they probably cause him a lot of pain and that's likely the reason why he does not want them manipulated. And I can't say I blame him. This is very typically seen in poorly bred Shih Tzus and he is a Shih Tzu and Maltese cross. So that's where that came from. Okay, we're gonna go for a bath. Okay, it's okay. It's okay, good boy. Good boy. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, tiger. Good boy, tiger. You're okay. I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy. Tearless soap free on the face. No, it does not sting his eyes. And yes, it is safe to use on his face. Okay, you're gonna let me rinse you down. Well, we gotta rinse it. We gotta rinse it, sir. So I washed him today in Nasty Critter, and then I'm gonna give him some conditioner. Whoop. Because if you don't use conditioner when you're washing your pets, then you are causing their skin to produce more oil because it needs to compensate for the oil that's been stripped. So if you add that oil back to their skin by using conditioner, it's actually much healthier for their skin and less irritating. Sometimes I don't use conditioner when a dog is freaking out in the bathtub, just because I want the bath to be over as quickly as possible. And it's okay if it's every once in a while, but if it's every single time you're bathing them, then you're gonna cause issues with their skin over time. So normally I would put the conditioner into the nozzle, but he barely has any hair, so I don't really need to use the nozzle to push it in. So I'm just gonna use some straight conditioner on your ears and on your body. It's very easy to get it to reach your skin today. in this way, why? You don't wanna face me? What's wrong with me? Okay, now, because he has no hair, I'm gonna put him in the crate to dry while I clean up his working area and disinfect some of my tools. And when I take him out of the crate, he will probably be pretty dry except for his, maybe his face, ears, and tail. And then I will finish that off on the table. But something tells me he would appreciate not being blow dried with a handheld dryer, right? Here you go, stay. He is mostly dry, so I'm just gonna finish him off a little bit on his face and ears. Okay, buddy. It's really just your ears. Good boy. Can I do the other ear? 
know? Let me tell you, he was as calm as a cucumber in the crate with the air blowing at his face. Now you definitely get a better finish when you hand dry the dog. But I work with a lot of dogs that are nervous and not really used to grooming, so I find that it's just better for them if I put them in a crate to dry. Like I said, he was as calm as a cucumber in the crate. He didn't care at all about the dryer, so I just think that that's nicer than subjecting him to force drying. And I will do that as much as possible with dogs as long as they're okay with the crate. Because if they're not okay with the crate, then they end up just panicking because they're in a crate, which makes the situation a little bit worse. But in his case, he did not mind the crate at all, and he actually just laid down with the air blissfully blowing in his face. Just going over him now with the seven blade. Good boy. You're being such a good boy this whole time. You're not mean. You're not mean. Not at all. You do not live up to your name. Good boy. No. Good boy. Underneath. Come here. Can you see in your eyes, please? You don't like holding your face too much. There's hairs that go in their mouth, and they always like to lick those hairs in. This is his only second time being professionally groomed in four years. Even though the owners do their best to keep up with him at home, he's not really used to being held in certain positions. For example, his face, so he's moving quite a bit. Okay. It's okay. Let's take those points off. See that point there? And then this point here. So we have a little bit more shape to work with. And I'm gonna switch over to my thinning shears. Nope. You must stay. Good boy. Very good boy. Very, very good boy. Good boy. No, good boy. So I'm just trimming his ears to where there is hair choppy and missing, I assume, from being trimmed at home. You can see these little hairs on the top of his nose here. Those have been trimmed at home and I kind of want them to grow out a little bit because they're a little bit too short. So they're gonna look a little funny for a bit until they grow out. Come here. Let me do your dreaded paws. I'm gonna brush out your little tail here. Doesn't really like to stand, so I guess I'm trimming this like this. Might have to fix it when I get you to stand up. Okay, I'm putting you in the belly band and it's time to do your paws, sir. Good boy. These nails are really long. It's okay, good boy. Good boy. I'm not bending his, his paw underneath because of how wonky his paws are. I don't know if that will be uncomfortable even though that's the typical way to do them. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna have to bend your paw in order to shave it though. I can't shave it that other way. I will try to do this quick. I have some mats in here. And normally I would brush those out, but if I brush these out, they will cause pain. So forget it. I'm just going to trim them out because who cares? Right? Stay. There you go. Try to make those paws as cute as possible. They're a little funky looking. Bring you down. I didn't film the other side doing his paws and nails. He was really good um, just because my battery is dying on my camera and I don't want to waste his time by changing those batteries. So forget it. So Tiger is all finished. He took me a total of two hours to complete. He looks a lot better now than when he came in and I'm sure he's feeling a lot better. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this before and after and I will see you again in a few days.